So Alice uh, Hemel Stags away on on Sunday, a trip down the the M1. I mean, um, you don't know if you're going to be playing yet because uh, such is the nature of the competition for places. Currently, uh, Vila and, and George get in ahead of you. Yeah, hundred percent. They're playing really well, aren't they? They're playing out of the skin, so um, I can't have too many too many. Uh, gripes with, with the selection and obviously I've just got to knuckle down and, and try and prove my game the best I can and, and you know get a game at either Rooker or, or loose forward but you know they're both very talented very talented players and both cracking blocks as well so I, you know we're happy for them to be picked and obviously it's, it's, a, it's a good kick up backside for me because you know it's, a, it's always good to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing for, for that place. And obviously with the, the reserves competition very intermittent at, at the minute the, the way to, to show John uh, you know what you're capable of, or, or cap capable of, is here at Tong uh, in training. Oh yeah, all, all day, mate. It's, um, you know, I aim to train 100% uh, every single time that I'm around training, and in everything I do, and away from the fields. You know, I, I consider my professionalism one of my strong aspects. So, um, you know, I like to look after myself away from the field, and and when I, you know, when I'm out on the training field, you know, I give you absolutely everything I've got, and and you know, even if it means staying behind for a, a few a few few minutes or an hour doing extras, then. And so be it. It's everything I can do to get that one percent better every day. And obviously, a measure of a, a player or a head coach uh, is is how they respond after a bit of a setback. Yeah, hundred percent. I've been set back, you know, most of my most of my career so far. Obviously, I'm only young, but it's been full of people saying, you know, you you're too small, or you're this, or you're that. Or so I've been moved from front row to hooker, and, and you know, and now there's more competition here with two great hookers at this club. So you know, I've just got to keep knuckling down. I've got to keep working hard, and I've just got to keep, you know, believing in myself and being true to myself, like I, like I have been so far. We've asked you this question numerous times, Sam. Uh, what's your preferred position? Uh, position where do you actually see yourself you know because at the minute you have brought quite yeah. a bit of utility value you've played second row loose forward predominantly hooker I mean uh, have you settled down on a, a position where you want to make your own and you know try and keep that that that's that shirt uh, in, in my head I have you know in my head I, I, I like to see myself as a hooker um, but obviously if, if I'm needed elsewhere for the team then I'm needed elsewhere for the team and you know and if I need to take them take the carries up and make the yards and that, then that's what I'll do for the team as long as we're getting the two points at the end of the day, but like if if in an ideal world, which which it obviously in, uh, I'd like to play hooker. I'd like to I'd like to start hooker and and you know make the make the nice shirt my own. And, and but all I can do is is train hard to, to make that so. Ten rounds into the season, we're just coming up to round eleven. How do you assess the Bradford Bulls? Uh, you know, from the start of the season to where they currently are at round ten. I think start of the start of the season, York away were one of the be probably the best game I've been involved with. Um, I think we've still got a lot more to give. I don't think we've we've anywhere near the the, um, the heights that we should we should it. Um, and I think we've got better standards for ourselves. And I still think we we have got more to give. Um, obviously, this second half of the season now is the, it's the it's the money ending. You know, this is the this is where it matters. So uh, I believe we'll come good, and all the boys believe we'll come good. Training stepped up a real intensity this week. Uh, hopefully, we can go and put a, a put a good performance in against Hemel because last time we had a bigger away day. Obviously, working away, and we all know what happened there. So. Um, hopefully we can learn from that working experience and turn out a, a good performance against Hemel. I mean, I speak to players like Dane Chisholm um, and Joe Keyes and a lot of the players, uh, very honest in the assessment that that defeat at Workington was a huge wake-up call for the side. Oh, 100, yeah, 100%. You know, the, the, um, we... I think we've always known that we can't afford to show up and expect to win everywhere we go and that's just a firm what everyone believes at the club so um, you know we, we have to learn from that you know whether it's how, how the journey is down there how we get off the bus how we warm up you know everything we're, everything we're looked at and scrutinised to, to the letter and you know we've, we have definitely learned from that and fingers crossed when we do eventually get off the 28 hour bus journey that's going to be down to Hemel we, we give a better account of ourselves. A lot's been said about the, the Hemel Stags playing surface at Pennheim where it's the, the shortest pitch in the professional rugby league circuit, just 91 metres by 60 across. I mean, it's very similar to Derwent Park. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously you went to Derwent Park with a particular game plan and it didn't uh, come to fruition, so hopefully no concerns on mm -hmm. Sunday on playing on such a tight, compact pitch. Oh, no, I think... To be fair, I'm only a little man, so it's going to feel massive to me anyway. You're 100, 100 metres too big, if I'm being brutally honest. So, um, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, the, the um, yeah, it didn't go to plan against working, but every team has them days, don't they? So, 
Um, we've got to be honest. We've just got that one's that one's in the past now. We've got to look forward to it, and uh, you know, fingers crossed that um, we can we can get the get the win against Hemel on the Sam Alassas pitch. <laughs> and just and just finally, Sam, uh, it's been announced this afternoon that uh, both Rowan Milnes and Oliver Wilson have been called up to the England Academy talent pathway. I mean. You yourself uh, was the captain of the England Academy in the couple of tests against Australia a couple of years ago. I mean, how did the England Talent Academy pathway benefit you, and, and how do you see that benefiting players like Rowan Milnes and Oliver Wilson? Yeah, um, it, it were it were fantastic. You know, the 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 players you play with at them at them sort of at that level. You know, I played with you know, Ash and Golden, Jordan Lilly, uh, Harvey Levet. You know, people like that who, who really are. Um, obviously now in Super League and, and playing outstandingly well, so um, you just I think those boys just have to embrace the talent they're with, but not forget that they're incredibly talented as well. You know, I went as a front rower, and, and Ollie Wilson is a you know he's a better front rower than I were at that age. So um, I think I think he'll absolutely rip it up. And same with Rowan. I think Rowan Rowan is very underrated for his age. I think he's a, he knows how to control the game. Very, he's a very very talented kid, um, and I think I think they'll uh, they'll give England everything they've got. I mean, you're still young yourself, Sam. But does the the talent on the Bradford Bulls Academy convey about coming through here at Old Sutherland Tong? Does that give you cause for excitement for the for the future of the club? Oh, of course it does. You know, the um, youth youth's the future, isn't it? And obviously, I've, I've pre- I was preaching that when I was 17, 18, trying to think. Come on, you know, I've, the youth the youth's the future and all this. Um, but like you say, I'm only 21, and, and I believe myself to also be you know be the future. Fingers crossed. So, but the players coming through, you know, that you've touched on uh, Ollie and Rowan there, but you've got Evan Evan Hodgson and uh, Keelan Foster and Reese Butterworth and Ryan Butterworth and people like that who are just you know they're outstanding players for. For their age and fingers crossed that you know they do get a shot sooner rather than later. 